So Sim EFB allows us to screen grab any sectional charts, airport charts, uh, departures, approach plates and animate them. As we can see here, we're flying out of Key West and the top panel, Sim EFB 3, is showing us the airport layout and the bottom one is showing us a sectional chart with a pre-plan already laid out and you can see now the third one has actually automatically changed to an aerial view so how do we do all that let me show you so here we are in sim efb i've got key west to marathon example open here we can see we've got all our images for our departure airport which is key west so we've got an aerial sectional airport layout airways and an approach or a departure plate i'm just going to use that as an example Given two known points, um, Sim EFB knows the longitude and latitude of those known points, and therefore, because the image is northerly up orientated, north is always at the top of all aeronautical maps and charts, it can work out the longitude and latitude and basically draw the map and move the image to show us our position in flight on a proper aeronautical chart. Uh, we also have in here a flight plan that we drew uh, with Sky Vector. We'll see that in a second. So let's set the two known points. We'll start with this sectional chart. Uh, I'm just going to press define as moving VFR map or chart. And this opens us up in a new window. I'm just going to resize it a bit so we can see it in the recording area. But effectively what this enables us to do is uh, zoom down on the image and move it around using the mouse scroll wheel and uh, drag and dro drag the image around. We've also got here um, to fit all the actual size. Um, anyway, I'm just going to scroll around and uh, there we can see Key West Airport here. And we've got an adjacent one, which is a naval base. So we need to set two known points. We've also got a couple of nav aids there, which have all got codes against them. And um, I'm going to press set here. This is for our two known points, and it's highlighting that that's the next step. So I'm just going to press set. So at the top here, we can set the Key West Aerodrome reference point. Every airport kind of has one of those. It's usually in kind of the middle of the airfield, and um, that's pretty sufficient for our purpose in this case. So let's click on that. And now what it's prompting us down the left hand side there, showing us where to put that so we can pop that on this little pin here that um, Sky Vector's popped on. And now it's prompting us to set the second point. So let's press the second point. And uh, this is the airbase next door look, and we can see its code is NQX. Now on all American charts, well, they tend to quote the IATA code. Uh, now there's kind of two codes that um, define um, airports, there's either the ICOA code, which is basically what uh, FS2020 uses when you enter the um, airport in, which is kind of an international standard used all over the world. And then there's IATA, which is a, tends to be a three-digit code. Some maps have the ICOA, some have IATA. But we do actually have both of them. So I can see here that there's the Air or Na Air, um, Naval Air air station at Key West and I'll, having selected that I can then just pop that on there. Now we can see we've got now two red pins denoting our two known points and SIM EFB has now drawn on it all the other known points it knows about within the kind of area of this map. Now we can see that uh, one or two don't quite line up properly. Now if I click on it, I, you can see it's just turned red and I can kind of move that and basically I can tune it. Sometimes it's not 100%, but it's a case of making it this kind of the best fit. So that's set that one. Um, now having seen the sectional chart, we can go to the aerial and you can see there we've got the runway. I can set point one here. Now this time I can select runway nine. And you can see now the help down the left hand side is now telling me where runway nine is. And I believe it's that's the end of the runway. And now it's switched to runway 27, which is the opposite side. And you can see again if I scroll out, I've now got various reference points. But you can see this one's way out. Let's just scroll that down, move that there. And now that's just fine-tuned everything 
fine-tuned everything to make that a little bit more accurate. Airport layout, I can do exactly the same with this. I can just say set point one, and um, it's asking me there which what are, what are we going to set? We're runway nine, and runway two seven, and there's our reference point in the centre. Now, this chart, if we had this, uh, Sim EFB will automatically switch between charts based based on kind of their detailed level. Uh, we can actually set a active area within the chart. So now what I can do is I could just draw a small square over there. And um, what that's done is that's told Sim EFB, I don't want it to animate if the plane is on these outer reaches. I just want it to cover this area here, which is basically the airport. So that's defined an active area within that MUTL chart. Um, I can go to my airways chart, which actually does have the route on it as well, but we can now set the ARP for there. And um, we do actually have our destination, which was Marathon, which is MTH. So I can press set to, and I can look down here for my MTH. It's that one there, isn't it? MTH. And of course, we can do the same with nav aids. And if we don't see the airport in there, we can select other airport, other nav aid. And that will allow us to search our database to find um, and basically any in, in the world. It allows us to search the whole database of nav aids and airports. Anyway, I'm going to click on there. And now that's set that. And if we zoom out, we can see it's superimposed various of the reference points on that chart. Now, let's come to this chart here, which is actually uh, an approach chart, I believe, or a departure chart. But the important part here, if I zoom in, is it really only has one known point on it, and that's runway nine. So how do we cope for this one? Well, we can go set runway nine, or basically the reference point for the run for the whole airport. So that's set that. But obviously here um, we've got various markers telling us the distance from the airport. So that says 6.5 nautical miles. I can't see the distance there, but if we scroll down, we can read it from the bottom here, 6.5 and 4.5. So that makes 11 nautical miles. This point here is 11 nautical miles. So let's say set that. And we're going to go down here and say known distance in nautical miles. So we can also set a point by longitude and latitude, or it's decimal minutes and seconds. But anyway, I'm going to set nautical miles, so I can just pop that in there, click on there, and type in 11. And now that's placed everything on there, ready for our flight. Let's just go over to the flight plan. We can access the flight plan and the arrival airport and set all the places there. And of course, this is kind of a zoomed out one. It's very similar to the one we've already used. So we can say set that and we'll set the second one to to marathon which was oh look there we go there's the departure there's the arrival airport there it's known that so you basically got the departure and arrival airport now because we're on the flight plan and uh, of course if you had a a larger flight you might have broken this down into several sectional um charts that you've obtained from somewhere and just place them points on there and off we go now, having done all that, that's all then stored um, for this airport. So if I now create another flight from Key West, all this, um, these defined points, uh, diagrams, maps, and charts um, will be shared with the next flight. And one final point, when we go to Publish, we have a selection box down here, which allows us to tell SIM EFB not to display certain uh, maps or charts during its automatic selection if we if we if we're flying with automatic selection of charts and maps on we can hide some for instance if we were flying in and we were going to use approach on runway seven we don't really want to see the approach for runway two five do we so we can hide that and we perhaps don't want it to switch to the aerial because the the quality of it's not that great but it is you know it's kind of nice to be able to have it there but uh, we wouldn't want it automatically displayed we'd much rather have the sectional charts displayed so there i would just say publish to flight simulator 2020 and uh, then i would have a moving map or chart in my cockpit